I'm here with Dr. Lawrence Baker from Stanford Medical School, who's who specializes in in healthcare policy. And I I, I have a, just a, a very basic question, and that we see these you know Blue Cross and Blue Shield all of the time, and sometimes they're used together, sometimes they're used differently, and it just seems confusing to me. What 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 are these things, and and how are they related to each other? Oh, so they're uh, they're related in some really interesting ways. They go way back in time. Um, so Blue Cross and Blue Shield began as separate things. Let's see if I can get this right. Blue Shield started was started by doctors who wanted to set up a healthcare plan um, to help their patients get coverage for healthcare. Kind of preventative, they needed. a preventative shield to help. A preventative from getting shield, to you. right, right, yes. right. So that was started uh, a long time ago. These both go back, Blue Cross and Blue Shield, to the to the 1930, 1930s. Really, they're getting started. Um, Blue Cross was started by the hospitals. Um, separately from Blue Shield originally, and they got together later as a way to help patients get coverage for hospital care. So, and I guess the cross, because you, once you're in the hospital, you might get a little religious. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> right. I'm not sure that's what they had in no. mind originally, but. Um, you know. And what about the blue? Is, is that I don't just know where the blue a comes color from. that makes people feel good? It's like a health care color? I think it must be a health care color. Red would be inappropriate. Let's go with blue. Blue, blue is right. You're not, you're not bleeding. Is, when exactly. Blue, oh. blue, blue is. So. You look at the sky. Okay. Okay. And so what happened? So I, I I do see these words used together. So these were separate plans. Doctors created the blue shields. Hospitals created the blue cross. And then they grew over time and changed. So they got started in the 30s. They were. Um, around through the 40s and the 50s, 60s, 70s. And so a couple things happen along the way that starts to get make things confusing a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, one is that they're operating in every state to some extent independently. So states regulate health insurance in this country or have a lot to do with regulating health insurance in this country. And so uh, every state had its own laws. And as a result, the Blue Cross and the Blue Shield plans in different states grew up in different ways. So what you come down to today is really different plans in, in every state because of this history of development. As states develop their laws differently, the plans would evolve in the different states I see. separately. So just, just to give, give myself a, a kind of a framework, what's happening is that pre-1920s, early 1930s, there were really weren't health care plans. Not to the, speak the, of. The, the physician said, hey, we want a way for people to, to see us without having to, you know, some way for them to maybe pay in a little bit every month or every year and, and that if something were to happen, they can see the doctors. The hospitals kind of had the same model, but they did it differently in every state because the state is the regulatory the state, especially, well, in the 30s, there weren't a lot of state regulations about health insurance. There wasn't health insurance. But right. as states evolved, as the healthcare system evolved, as the plans evolved, it grew and grew separately in slightly different directions in every state. So that led to the formation, really, of, you know, you see Blue Cross of Tennessee or Blue Shield of Florida or Blue, Sh Blue Cross, Blue Shield of Michigan. They're all different because they're all in their own state environment. And they've so all so does, is, you know, normally, you, you know, these kind of are brands. We've all heard of them in that way. But normally a brand means something that it means more quality or less quality, but in, in, in or, or some type of spin on, you know, Apple means, you know, fun consumer experience or something like that. But in this case, it's, I mean, if I'm hearing you correctly, blue, if, if there's Blue Cross of California and Blue Cross of Texas, they have nothing to do with each other or very little to do with each other? So they've, so they, they all had their start kind of together in the I 30s see. and then they've all grown in their own ways, but they've stayed related. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them to greater extents than others. And so one of the things that happened uh, along the way was they formed an association. There's now something in the U.S. called the I Blue see. Cross Blue Shield Association, uh, which is, a, uh, I guess, an association of a lot of the plans in different states that allows them to talk to each other to try to work this, together. This is an umbrella for all of the Blue Cross and all of the Blue Shield. So that's why we hear them so used so frequently together when people say Blue Cross, Blue Shield. Yeah, so there's two two reasons you hear that together. One is the association that yeah. tries to uh, work with plans from both groups. The other is that in some states over time, the two got together and actually became one health insurance plan. So there are states where the health insurance plan is Blue Cross and Blue Shield of a state, and there are other states where they stayed separate. So, you know, we're here in California where Blue Shield and Blue Cross have historically stayed as separate plans, but there are some states where they're the same thing, and then you'd hear Blue Cross and Blue Shield. So if someone says, tells you Blue Cross of State X, that just means to you health insurance plan. There's nothing else that you can really take from that. That S So once upon a time, you may have been able to take more from it, but yeah. these days they're they're it's possible for them to vary in quite a few different ways. Some of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield plans, uh, especially the Blue Cross plans, uh, have become for-profit plans. So historically, these were always non-profit, but in the so last- So Blue Cross especially, some of them have gone for-profit, or, or uh, both? Yes, but I think in both cases, but Blue okay. Cross is um, the one that I pay more attention to. Right. Um, 
So, so they may be for-profit or not-for-profit plans. Uh, they may act in similar ways, and they do because the association, at least the ones right. in the association, tend to act with some similarity from place and just to place. To, just because I've explained this all the time about even Khan Academy is a not-for-profit. A not-for-profit is an entity. It can, it can in theory charge revenue. Khan Academy doesn't. But it, it, it could charge revenue, but there's no owner of the organization who can kind of become rich off of it. It's owned by the public, while a for-profit has shareholders and... And it can be bought and sold, and, and it can I issue dividends and all the rest. That's yeah. Right. So historically in America, most health plans were not-for-profit entities. They um, had they couldn't um, take money that they earned and give it out to people to who might be the owners. The exactly. company had to be reinvested. And in fact, even in, in the early days of Blue Cross and Blue Shield in some states, they were treated as quasi-public right, entities, right, right. and they've kind of grown away from that a bit more. But there's a, this there's this history, especially with Blue Cross and Blue Shield, of very not-for-profit, public-spirited entities. When you get to for-profit plans, which we really didn't have in the U.S. in a big way until maybe the last decade or two uh, where we've seen some conversions, um, these are situations where the plan can act explicitly as a profit generator for its shareholders, for its right. owners. And, and some it are now publicly that. traded and, and they're on stock exchanges. And they may and, be publicly traded. And, yeah. and, and so they would, and so when we talk about the, some of them becoming for profit here, it's that literally the, the I don't know, the license to the u name, use the name either Blue Cross or Blue Shield or, or maybe some of the assets of the former not for profit are somehow transferred or I guess a for profit buys them. So we had a series of these things. We called them conversions. And yeah. the plan, when the company converted from being a not-for-profit to a for-profit, there were a lot of states in which those conversions or the situations in which they happened where um, the, the public, the public, the government, yeah. somebody uh, compelled the, the uh, for-profit entity in the conversion to create a public good. So there are some foundations that now exist because oh, in the conversion they allowed a transfer of a not-for-profit to a for-profit, but you had to create something right, valuable right. for the public. So some of the things that we see now in states, some of the big foundations that exist in healthcare are conversion foundations around the for-profit conversions of Blue Cross I see. Blue I see. But when we see things like, I, I think it's, I, I, I always get confused between Blue Cross music, but I think, I believe Anthem is has a kind of, you see your Anthem, was it Blue Blue Cross in California. So Anthem is a company that um, is, uh, well, it's a large company that has Blue Cross, I think mostly Blue Cross, or all Blue Cross, mm -hmm. uh, uh, affiliates or sub-entities right. in different states. I think they have 14 or 15 right. of So them. these are for-profit, these are for-profit Blue Crosses if they have Anthem with them. I believe that's correct. Right, right, right. And is there any, I guess, in how they operate from a from a from a consumer point of view, any difference between a for profit Blue Cross or Blue Shield, or is anything that we can tell? Um, so that's actually a really interesting question. There are people who've gone to look and they've tried to sometimes find yeah. some evidence for differences. There are a few studies out there where people can find some differences, yeah. but there, there's not a lot of evidence that they behave really differently. You know, at the end of the day, they have to compete in the same right, marketplace right. for the business of the same companies right. and the same people. And right. if they behaved really obviously different, if one was obviously way better than the other, the market would sort yeah. out who's going to win this. And the market that has allowed sense. both types to exist. So uh, y there are certainly differences in the written charters and maybe differences in the preferences and the... Uh, the stated ideals of the people who run these organizations, right. and that might make a difference in some cases. Um, but it's hard when you aggregate it all together and you really go try to do national data or something to I find see. a big difference between. So them. the big picture here is, as much as I've you know I've looked at healthcare plans, even when we're trying to figure out for for employees at Khan Academy which healthcare plan to choose and which not, and and I've stared. Oh, what's the difference between Blue Cross and Blue Shield? There's actually very little I can tell just by looking at those brands. I would really have to dig deeper into the actual healthcare policy, and that's going to be different from state to state. It some will be for profit, some will be not profit. Even that's not enough to tell you a general rule of thumb. You really just have to look at the healthcare plans. You have to look at the healthcare plans, and it's it's Blue Cross and Blue Shield, but there's other yeah. plans out there. There's Kaiser around yeah. here. There's Aetna and Cigna yeah. and other plans. And they can vary um, from state to state. And even within, you can see variations. So Blue Cross in California, or Blue Shield in California, might offer some different types of choices. So if you said, I've got a, a really nice plan from Blue Cross, and I look at another state, and you look at a Blue Cross plan, it might be that you're just looking at a less generous one where there is another one that right. you could look at. So you even have to look within a company at the specifics yeah. of what but, uh, you're Definitely when we go from state to state, it would be weird to have brand loyalty to 
Some it was yeah, you know, Blue Cross and Blue Shield have the this. Thing. They have this history of being public spirited entities, right, and right. some of that persists to this day. So maybe that's something to think about. But in a general sense, there are so many things that they could vary on that you'd want to be very careful um, with any choice you're making, and and know that it could really vary across state lines. Interesting.